How much could you improve if you actually aim trained every single day for a month? Would you go up one division, two, more? This is something that a lot of players likely wonder every single day. Most people have heard of aim training, but again, most of them don't really do it. So it's time for us to figure out exactly what they're missing out on. That's why last month I set out on a journey to aim train every single day and see exactly how much I could improve my aim. The results? Not quite what you'd expect. It's important to remember though that just because you give somebody a lightsaber doesn't make them a Jedi. There is a ton of theory that goes into aiming, and just doing aim training alone isn't going to take you to the top. In fact, if you guys actually are part of the 1% of players that are actually aim training every single day, you have likely a whole different issue. This is why we created an hour-long masterclass over at Skillcap that will teach you everything that you need to know about how to make aiming as easy as possible and start climbing the ranks. And this course will teach you all of the gunfight hygiene that you need to know to make sure that even if you have bad aim, you could still land shots. We'll teach you all of the secrets that I use to maintain a top 1% rank, despite the fact that my physical aim was actually quite atrocious. More on that at the end of the video. Now, I originally wrote this as part of a series that I was going to work on documenting my journey while aim training for a whole month. If I were to aim train every single day, how much would it improve my aim? How much would I rank up? You see, I've worked with a large number of students over the last two years, helping them improve at the game, and something that has always been shocking to me is how many of these players complain about having bad aim or bad mechanics, but how few of these players actually took time out of their day to practice these mechanics. Surely aim training helps players improve their aim, so why does nobody actually do it? And if you did aim train every single day, how much would it actually help you? This is what I wanted to find out. Since I've been resting the last few acts in Ascendant, I figured what a perfect opportunity to make a series documenting my climb from Ascendant back into Immortal. I I figured this would be a quick month long journey and then it would be over with. My checklist was aim train, get better, win. It wasn't this easy. It's actually pretty normal for players to get worse before they get better. Sometimes when teaching yourself new skills or practicing new things, it won't click right away. This is really dangerous because many players will use this as an excuse to quit doing things that will ultimately make them play better. Say for example, while playing with a specific bad habit, you play at a gold level. This is what's comfortable to you though, and you're used to it. So when you try to cut out this bad habit and replace it with a good one, it might feel weird at first. You might not get it right away, even if the good habit is better for you. Temporarily, you might even start playing at a silver level, but in the long term, it's better to play this way and you should end up climbing once you master it. A good example of this would be if you were to say switch your mouse grip. Let's say there's a specific grip that just overall is better than another one, and you wanted to try to switch to it. At first, it's going to feel really unnatural and you might even notice your aim getting worse. But over time, the hope is that this grip will ultimately be better for you and you'll have better aim. This isn't to say that there is a specific mouse grip that's better than another. Even if this were the case for the average player, it's definitely Definitely not worth committing to, just for maybe a little bit more accuracy. You can absolutely hit Radiant with any sort of standard grip, but I do think that many players likely have felt these sort of growing pains when attempting to try aim training, and I wanted to assure you that it's pretty natural. The week after I started aim training, I deranked from Ascendant 3 down to Ascendant 2. That's okay though, like I said, it's completely natural and I wasn't worried about it at all. So I wrote this first video talking about my progress, and you know what? I figured, hey, rough start to the series. But the week after that, I deranked from Ascendant 2 down to Ascendant 1. Bro, I can't keep making a series about how I'm deranking. The frustrating thing though was my aim was actually getting a lot better. Like I could feel it and anyone who has done any amount of aim training probably knows what I'm talking about. There were times where I would land a flick in a game and it almost didn't even feel like it was me shooting. It felt like there was some sort of aim demon that just took over my body just to sit the enemy down real fast, but for some reason I just couldn't win. I tried a number of different routines over the first month just to try to figure out what made the most sense to me. There's a specific clip of Ye that I'm sure many of you have seen where he talks about figuring out what good aim looks like to you and how you can achieve it. Like what is good aim to you? And like how do you get to that point? Do you know what I'm saying? Like that's what you kind of have to do. You need to have a visual image in your head of what that looks like. I don't think I ever fully understood what he meant in this clip until I started digging into aim training a lot more. I initially chose a few different aim routines and I started to get a feel for what exercises I liked and which ones I didn't like. Some exercises had crazy flicks that I felt were a little bit silly and some really heavily placed emphasis on speed over precision, which just wasn't my view on how Valorant is meant to be played. Like Ye recommended, I was starting to get an idea of what good aim was to me and how I wanted to achieve it. 
To me, good aim all comes down to precision and discipline. The best aimers are not the ones who are spraying at everything that they see or swinging their crosshair all over the place and landing the nastiest flicks. To me, the best aimers are the ones who take their time with their shots and let their crosshair placement do all of the heavy lifting. The ones who have the discipline to avoid temptations of something like crouch spraying and really only go for one taps and bursts. To me, the best aimer is the one who kills their target with the least amount of bullets and maximizes their accuracy. This is exactly why I drew up a playlist on what made sense to me. I tried to choose tasks that would train my tracking, my micro flicks, as well as my discipline. I even experimented with recoil a little bit in Kovacs while trying to train myself to only shoot one bullet at a time. Eventually, I settled on a playlist that I titled Skill Capped Valor Aim Routine in Kovacs if you're interested in checking it out. It's six simple exercises that should cover all of the important skills you're going to need to train to improve your aim in Valorant. And it's actually relatively short, so it's super nice for somebody who isn't looking to spend an hour every single day aim training, which to be honest is likely most of the Valorant community. That's likely the reason most people don't have consistent routines that they do because they've heard all of these random coaches telling them they need to aim train an hour every single day. If you're trying to go from Immortal to Radiant, maybe that will help but if you're trying to go from gold to diamond i promise you this playlist is perfectly fine you need to commit to it though and that's the key factor here remember earlier when i was talking about my climb after i started aim training i dropped all the way down to ascendant one i scrapped the series entirely and honestly i was feeling incredibly embarrassed i was trying to write a quick series about how aim training helped me rank up and i dropped two whole divisions in two weeks we have an editing team that i send these videos to so it's not like i couldn't pretend like it never happened but still even with my deranking and needing to postpone the series one fact still felt the same. My aim was definitely getting better. I could feel it and I may have been losing every single game I played but I could feel myself getting better. So I stuck it out. I kept aim training every day. I kept playing more deathmatch and I would play around two to three matches a day. It wasn't just discipline with my aim I had to work on, I also had to work on personal discipline as well. Part of the reason for these massive D ranks was tilt queuing and fatigue. I was working in a full aim routine that took up to around 45 minutes a day every day and then I would queue 5-6 to six Valorant games and go on a massive loss streak. During these loss streaks, I would hardly say anything to my team, and at times, I'd honestly get very frustrated with them. This would result in horrible losses and an even worse mental. I had zero self-discipline, and I needed to rethink my approach to the game. So, I took a step back, and I said, okay, we're going to aim train every day. I will play two to three games a day max, and in these games, I will do everything in my power to communicate with my team. No matter how hard I want to shut down and not communicate and tilt, I will suffer through the match, and I will do everything I can to win the game. And then slowly, I started to climb. Something I like to do in my videos is include real game examples so that these videos can be a little bit more educational, especially for you visual learners, rather than just giving you my opinion or experience. I think a lot of guide channels just kind of word vomit stuff onto you without ever actually showing examples of how their tips can apply in real games. So at the very least, I wanted to go the extra mile to show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. In this first clip, what I wanted to highlight was just how my crosshair moves around during this round. Especially this first omen kill, man, it just felt so satisfying the way that my crosshair snapped right to where he was about to peek me from. This was pretty early on in my aim training, and admittedly afterwards my pre-aim isn't perfect, but I wasn't just waving my crosshair around anymore. I felt confident and I was snapping towards each angle I wanted to aim at. In this round, I knew that Omen was flanking, I just wasn't sure if he was going to come from long or short. That's why you'll see I snapped towards short like this, and I just got a bit lucky that he peeked during this exact moment. After flank was dealt with, I knew Omen was playing spawn, so I wanted to try and help them out. You'll notice I swing out and hold the angle for them, but Sova is droning so I unpeek. 
if Silva clears this corner with his drone, there's not really anything I can do about it. So my goal was actually not to shoot the drone and maybe give Omen a chance to make a play. Unfortunately, Omen gets picked off, placing me in a 1v2. While I'm tagged though, you'll notice I take a step towards the right side of default as if I'm going to swing window. Immediately after I take this step, I realize this isn't really an option anymore. So many times people will get pinged by a recon and showcase exactly what their next intention is going to be. I knew if I did this, I'd likely just die right away. So instead, after this, you'll notice I choose to peek out towards CT instead to see if I can get a fight onto the Sova. Once I realize he's shooting shock darts though, I decide to take this opening to peek out towards window instead. I'm able to do this because I threw out a TP a bit earlier, so immediately after landing this kill, I can teleport out of danger to avoid the trade. This catches Reyna completely off guard, and now I'm in a 1v1, but the spike isn't super planted for me. If Sova taps the spike, I'm going to have to push him, which isn't really optimal. This is why when I hear Sova running out back sight, I try to swing him while he's scaling up. He might not actually know where I am yet if he didn't hear the TP, meaning that if I swung him confidently, I might catch him off guard and have the jump on him. In this case, I did, and I was able to land a clean flick to finish out the round. I've made this exact peak long many times before though, and frequently I would lose this duel in the past. This was a round where I was very aware of the game state, and I was able to use my aim to help clutch it out. Let's show you a more recent clip though. I think this clip really highlights what you want to see from aim training. The last one was kind of nice to show because it showcases how good aim can complement good gameplay. I made good decisions and I was able to close out the round with good aim that complemented my good decisions. In this round, I wouldn't say that I made a ton of good decisions, I was kind of just shooting. You're going to encounter so many rounds like this in Valorant. When you're in a 1v4, sometimes the only thing you really can do is just start shooting. Didn't win this round, but I come pretty damn close. And if anything, I'd say this is why you're aim training. Because because I landed a few nice shots, it made a very unwinnable round incredibly winnable. And when most of your games can be decided by just one or two rounds, these clutches can be the difference of you winning or losing. After around a month of aim training, I ranked back up to Ascendant 2 and then back into Ascendant 3. But it didn't stop there. I kept going. I hit a mortal, and then I hit a mortal 2, and then it stopped. Or rather, the act ended. In episode 6, act 2, I played 121 matches with a 53.7% win rate. That's not that impressive, but it sure beats my sub 50% win rate last act. But that's not the part that really stood out to me, actually. There's two stats that I found particularly interesting during this climb. The first, of course, being my aim. The previous act, I had a headshot percentage of 24.9%, which isn't bad by any means, but the act after that, I actually jumped up three whole points to 27.9%. This is my highest headshot percentage of any act by a large margin, which is very likely not a coincidence. The other stat I found interesting is that while I played 69 hours of competitive last act, I also played 19 hours of deathmatch, meaning that a little bit less of one fourth of my time spent on Valorant was training my aim in deathmatch. Oftentimes when I do coaching sessions for players, they don't even have two hours spent in deathmatch for the act. The thing is, it's really easy to watch a pro player and wish that you could aim like them, but the reality is you don't see the countless hours that they spent aim training to get to that point. It's no coincidence that I spent one fourth of my time in deathmatch this act and randomly started ranking up again. With this success, I wanted to continue on this upwards trend into the next act, and you know what? I've been doing just that. This act, my win rate is currently sitting at 74.1% over 27 games, which is absolutely incredible to me. I've shot all the way up to Immortal 3, and I'm currently sitting at top 2000 on the leaderboards, which isn't anything crazy, but to me that's really freaking cool considering over two months ago I was feeling really down on myself. So does aim training work? Uh, yeah, for me it really did. Is it going to work for everyone though? Well, I can't necessarily guarantee that. In my case, I've studied the game quite a bit, and I've actively coached dozens of players to Immortal. I always felt like my mechanics were the worst part of my gameplay, and I started to notice that even when I made objectively the right decision, I would still end up losing gunfights. For me, I think I saw a massive benefit from focusing on my mechanics, because mechanics were by far the worst part of my gameplay. But again, I didn't just focus on my mechanics, I also focused on making the most of every single match by playing a small amount of games each day, and doing everything in my power to win those games. There were plenty of games where I wanted to shut down and get frustrated at my teammates, but I didn't because I recognized that that was part of the thing that was holding me back. It is undeniable for me that aim training helped me rank up, but you might experience something completely different. There is only one way to find out. I can actually help you get started as well. Over at Skillcapped, we have an hour-long masterclass that I put together myself that will help teach you guys how you can get a mortal level aim as quickly as possible in Valorant. Sure, you can just copy the Kovacs routine that I use, but there's a lot more that goes into aiming well in Valorant than just clicking a few dots on screen. There is a ton of theory that goes into aiming, and although you need to practice the physical aspects of it, if you don't know the theory, it's very likely that your aim is going to feel significantly worse than it actually is. You see, in my case, I spent countless hours learning the theory from players way better than me, but never 
really got around to practicing the physical part of it because I'm lazy as hell. Luckily for you, if you've been aim training this whole time, it's going to take you a lot less time to learn the actual theory than it is to practice the game. We can get you caught up to speed in just an hour and you'll see immediate improvements in your gameplay. And hey, if you don't believe me or you think I'm full of shit, we offer a money back guarantee. So if you don't find value from the course, you'll get refunded, no questions asked. At the very least, if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you checked it out because I put a ton of work into the course and it makes my bosses like me when people watch it. As always though, I'd like to thank you all for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.